TBN Sessions with Naomi Rain, Seed One, Take One, Marker. I always like to say I grew up in rehearsal. I grew up in church, listening to music, rolling around underneath the pews and running with my friends and my brother, him annoying me as usual. Thank you, Larry. Um, and I think I always knew that I wanted to make music for Jesus. Jesus says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. And I think that Jesus' name is a key. And so by saying it, by lifting it up, by telling people, I'm praying for you, um, I'm bringing God into the conversation. And as that happens, people start to go, okay, that was the power of God. That was Jesus. Loved before I had a name. Watched before I knew my shame. Oh, the Lamb was slain before the earth was laid. What an awesome price He paid. I owe it all, all to us all, every part of me, lying at His feet, I owe it all, let every breath I take, rise to bring Him praise, to the glory of one name. I got filled with the Holy Spirit at a, at a conference in Long Island. I was 11 years old, I believe, and I wanted to go. I sat in there, and the person asked, does anybody want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? And I'm like, me. Um, I would like the Holy Spirit, please, um, because I knew that there was another layer to it, right? There was, a, there was something else, and I felt the, the calling, you know, and the drawing. What they used to do back then was they would record on a cassette tape your time of ministry, it, like if you got a prophetic word or something like that. But for me, they recorded me getting filled with the Spirit and speaking in tongues. And so I took that tape and I would listen to it over and over and over. And I would pray and I would talk to the Lord. And then I remember being in my closet and closing the door. Nobody knew, none of my family knew that I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I didn't want to tell them. But it was that time where I was able to just connect with the Lord, me and Him, in the closet. It was just my favorite place to be. Blinded eyes will one day see Every lost made victory There is healing in one name One name He has silenced every foe Every high thing brought down low There is freedom in one name One name And soon everyone will know There still lives a blessed hope Our salvation's in one name One name I'm singing now Jesus Jesus Oh Jesus Jesus Sweet Jesus Jesus I'm lifting up Jesus Jesus What I've learned about the Holy Spirit is that if you allow Him, if you desire to hear His voice, He will teach you, He will train you, and He will teach you how He speaks. And it and it keeps growing, and one thing just builds upon the next, and He keeps speaking, and then sometimes He goes silent, and you learn how to hear Him from the Word, and to read and, and realize that as you've spent time with Him, now um, I know Him, I know what He likes. There's a lot of growth, and, um, and He speaks and keeps speaking and keeps teaching. 
So I owe it all, all to Jesus, all, every part of me, lying at his feet. Yes, I owe it all, let every breath I take rise to bring him praise. To the glory of one name, Jesus. When I realized that I was pregnant, I was a youth worship leader at my church, and my boyfriend at the time was a, in ministry at the church as well. And so it was very scary because I knew I knew that I wasn't going to end the pregnancy. I was going to keep the baby. And because of that, I knew that people were going to find out that I was in sin and also that my life was going to change forever. I think the most difficult moment for me was telling my parents. Well, I thought my dad was going to kill me, literally. Um, and he was like, okay. And the next day he took me to the mall to go shopping because my clothes were getting too small. And as I walked through the mall, I was so ashamed, but my dad made me feel like it's fine. He's like, we're gonna get you some clothes. And I can't help but think now of like Adam and Eve and realizing that they were naked. And the Lord is like, all right, I'm gonna cover you up and I'm gonna get, you can't use the leaves, that's not gonna work. What I was using to cover myself wasn't gonna work. And although it took me a long time to get through the shame of, of my pregnancy, I think that was one of the first steps toward healing and feeling like I was supported even though I was wrong. Before I knew my name, before I drew a breath, He was making ways for me. Now and every day, in each and every step, He is making ways for me. When my heart is full of doubt, feels like faith is running out, I've come too far to turn around. I know God will work it out. God will work it out. One thing I know, one thing I found, my God. probably was about six months pregnant and I was um, sitting there. I heard the Lord say to me, there's a blessing in rain. There's a purpose in it. And the purpose is to bring forth that which is buried, right? Those seeds that are buried and to bring forth fruit and to bring forth leaves. And so y'all know my middle name is Rain. And he was telling me the baby that you're carrying is a blessing. Although what you did was wrong, I can bring good things out of bad situations. When my heart is full of doubt, it feels like faith is running out. I've come too far to turn back now. I know. Nothing impossible for him. There's nobody like our God, no. And there's nothing impossible for him. There's 
nobody like our God, no, and there's nothing impossible for Him, oh. guess to anybody who's feeling stuck and ashamed and like there's no way out, I would say to you to hold on and try to see the hand of God. God is actually very patient and he's very kind. And sometimes even in those moments of discipline where he'll let you feel the the gap, you know, he'll he'll let you feel the space. It's so that you can learn. It's so that you can come back. It's so that you can recognize your need for him. And so I would say to look for his hand. Cause God is working now. God is working now. One thing I know, one thing I found. God is working now. So when I was 24, I was a worship leader at a church and I had gotten a prophetic word from the Lord. And so I was like, Mm -mm. Um, what is this minister saying? And she was basically saying that we would have uh, another baby. And so I was against it. I was like, no more children. I wanted an even amount of kids (laughs) uh, from the beginning. And so I'm like, that is not the word of the Lord. Satan, you're a liar. But we went home and we just decided, well, actually in that moment, we just decided to receive it. Like, well, Lord, if you're saying that, then fine, Um, we'll receive it. And we did. We we walked into it and and tried and all of that. And so I ended up getting pregnant. But on the day before my 25th birthday, on Easter Sunday, um, I was leading worship and I began to miscarry. The hour is dark. And it's hard to see What you are doing Here in the ruins And where this will lead I remember the next few months of my life I remember being very angry Like, why would you tell me That there's gonna be a five You know, five of us if You would just like let it go away. Like this was not okay. And I remember being very upset. I felt tricked. I felt (laughs) duped. Um, But I also knew better. I also knew that if God said it, that there was a place that I had to hope. Oh, but I know that over the years, I'll look back on this moment and see your hand on it and know you were here. And I'll testify of the battles you've won. How you were my portion when there wasn't enough. And I'll sing the song of the seas that we've crossed The waters you parted The waves that have walked Singing, oh, oh, oh My God did not fail Oh the story I'll tell oh, 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 I know it is well Oh, oh, 
what I actually believe the Lord was teaching me in that time was that who He's given me, right, my children, are a gift from Him, and that it was outside of my control, and that I could yield to Him and trust that if He said He was going to give me something good, even if something had to be taken away, even if um, if it was going to take more time than I wanted, I had to learn that God was good and gave good gifts, even when I didn't feel like it would it would happen. Sing it. up getting pregnant again and it was after a a long tumultuous time of just trusting God because I didn't even want to try I'm like forget it after trusting the Lord getting pregnant again and realizing that that was the right timing that we were actually in the right situation I realized even before that we were moving in our own effort rather than trusting and leaning on him so the Lord was really teaching me to be open to to his timing and not trying to push something a, a, ahead of its time and leaning in on him and trusting him. And now that little guy is almost 10 years old and running around talking too much. Uh, but it is, a, it is a testimony that in my life that God is faithful even in the midst of disappointment and loss. Singing, oh.
If I could say that there was a theme running through these songs, I think it's probably the sovereignty and the goodness of God um, and, and then our response to it. Like one name is like, this is Jesus, this is who we worship, and now we're gonna worship, we're gonna call on Him. Um, we agree, it's like there are things that are happening in heaven and we agree with heaven. We are coming into agreement with heaven. You know, we're sometimes more concerned about the kingdoms and the political systems and the government that we live in rather than the government and the kingdom of heaven. The point of that song is like, Lord, how you want it to be done, let it be done here in whatever way that looks like. Whatever you want me to do, that's what I want to do. And so it's just a song of yieldedness and, um, and surrender. Father, make us one, fill us with your passion. We'll stay on the wall, making intercession. Show us how to pray, watching while we wait, oh Lord. Heaven here on earth, let the will of God come. This our only hope. Jesus and his kingdom It's time we believe We were made for so much more When we fall on our knees We know we will see his glory And if we only believe He's building our testimony Oh Life is not just for me. My life is not only just about God, right? Because that's His mission, but it's about people. How do I help? How do I heal? How do I preach this word? How do I give people and bring people this truth? And I can do that as a bus driver, as a teacher, as a singer, a songwriter. I believe that it's really the glory on the inside of us that God wants to use us to cover the earth as we go out, as we preach His gospel, as we sing of His goodness, right? That people will hear it and go, oh, there's a God in heaven who's good, and they will see the glory of God. Because we agree with heaven, oh heaven. We agree with heaven, come 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 heaven. I want to say this last thing. I think that sometimes we get so focused on our purpose that we forget that our purpose, our individual purpose, should be a part of God's greater purpose and His will. Preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out devils, like this type of stuff. And I'm just trying to see, okay, Lord, in whatever I'm doing, how am I accomplishing this great commission that you've given us? Amen.